Whoops. Well, two of them went off. Procedure call it fourth against the Cardinals. So that will bring up a first and 15. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter and a 14-point lead for Mentor. You know, uh, defensively, what Mentor's done a nice job tonight is they have not allowed Pepe Pearson to get any of those cutback lanes to do damage. They really haven't given him a chance to even get started, so they've done a great job defensively. The Panthers trying to get the ball back here as Mentor's got that 14-point edge. Hand off to Green. You know, he reminds me of the Jimmy Brown. He'd go into a big group of tacklers, and all of a sudden he'd come out the other end. And that's what Green does. You're always expecting him to sneak out. Jim but Brown had Hickerson, Shafrath, and uh, great linemen in front of him. Cantini in on that stop, uh, John. It's interesting, too. The majority of the plays that Green carries are between the tackles. Look at that average. My golly, some people say gaudy. I think that's a pretty good term for it right now. Manor says, yeah, they'll take it. Green goes in motion, and again, another procedure coming outside. It's an encroachment call. I think just watching Dead Chad ball. Green. Ball oh, listen, listen. False start. Bobby Hallam. I think just watching Chad Green move just freaks out a lot of the players <laughs> out on the field. <laughs> He, go, he just goes in motion, and people just kind of lose their mind. <laughs> you know, Chad Green does have a Euclid connection. He plays in the summer on the uh, the baseball team that plays in the Continental Baseball World Series that uh, Euclid does a fantastic job staging every summer, but he plays for the Euclid team. And uh, as we mentioned, a lot of pro teams will be uh, checking him out in the spring. He may get drafted by someone. Mm. With that speed and uh, his ability to hit, this kid can play. Too high. Pastore tries to pull it in with one hand. It just doesn't work. And he also seems to be looking for uh, Brian Boyle a lot tonight. Seems like his favorite receiver. Pastore's caught 18. Boyle came in with 12 catches. And big number 82 at 6-2 is pretty good target. And uh, he swatted it down there. Almost looked like he was a defensive back. Uh, uh I'll, I'll tell you guys, watch out for that formation and that motion again because I got to believe that they're setting up a throwback to Chad Green. He, he went in motion the last couple plays to the right. Well, they're slot to the right. There he goes in motion again. goes Green. I'll tell you what, Euclid was offside, and he didn't call it. And a completion and a flag. Pulling that one in with Boyle. Let's wait for the call. Boy, Boyle's had a nice game tonight. Waving off the flag. That's a good way. So it's a third and 18. Now it becomes a third and about 15. I mean, fourth and about 15. You know, that's one, that, that's one of the great things about having a guy like Chad Green also is, is that it opens up the game for so many of the other players down on the field. You know, the decoy factor. Uh, you know, you take a guy like Chad, you move him in motion, and all of a sudden everyone on the defense is raising their arms and they're pointing and everything else. And, uh, you know, they roll out the other way and come back and throw the ball. Well, men are not taking any chances. Going to punt. Beatty back deep. Good snap there. It's going to be... Gets a bounce. Matter bounce gets inside the 10. Back deep was number 10, Kevin Bremer. Waiting for that punt, but it took a good bounce, and it gets inside the 10. Euclid will take over. First down from that point with 3.49 showing on the clock, but Euclid down by two touchdowns. 14 points, 20 to 6. They really need to get something going here, fellas. Yeah, Brenner split to the near side. And he won't get past number nine. Chad Green's back there defending. Now with that speed. And a fake handoff. It's a keeper by Yusik. And he gets across the 15 to about the 17 or 18. And John Kirschbaum in on the stop. Good piece of real estate picked up by the quarterback. 
And what do the Panthers do to uh, stop Chad Green trying to get the football back? You see the coaches working with the kids. Trying to figure some things out here. They've done one job. At least they've held, held them, made them kick the ball over to them. So you could now it's really the onus is on the offense because the defense has been out there quite a bit. It'll be a second and two for Euclid. Open is Jernigan, and he's struck out. Yeah! Well, one of the, one of the things, uh, gang, that uh, Kirschbaum was saying while we were interviewing him before the game was that he's been very proud with the way his secondary has played. His linebackers have really uh, dropped into their coverage nicely. And they've reacted. To, in fact, they've really only been beaten one play, and that was the razzle dazzle early in the contest. So they play smart ball. He probably has his quickest secondary he's had, and uh, they react to the ball very well. So it's very much an uphill climb for the Panthers, down by 14 here, and we're almost three quarters into this one, guys. Well, Derek Stetter got his tackle for a loss, <laughs> protecting and giving time, and a great completion to Jernigan. And he is there for a first down. Well, he Big knifed play. that one in there. What excellent play action. Just excellent. He's got one of his linemen out there for protection. Don't get any ideas. And watch him rifle this ball in there. He's hit 58% of his uh, completions. And Rashawn came into the game with 36 catches. He's wearing that hat because there's no hair underneath that... Uh, uh, he shaved his head, so he's uh, trying to stay warm. And this is the person. And he gets it to the 30 to about the 31. There's a pickup of about four yards. Bring up a second and six with a minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Brian Boyle, the linebacker, is the one who brought him down. And at the end of this quarter, we'll be going to scoreboard to see. Uh, maybe you can compute who will be in the playoffs with these scores. I don't have my apple here with me. That's pretty hard. You, you, need, you definitely need one of those. Uh, no, but they computers. got donuts. <laughs> well, we're talking about computers. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Again, oh. well, here's the, here's the, not enough time. The penetration by the front line of Mentor and a fumble, and it is recovered by Mentor's. Chris Luoma. Well, he's been all over the place defensively, hasn't he, Chris? Chris has done a great job defensively. Let's see if we can pick it up here. The snap. Mike sets the throw. Look out, I'm in trouble. Luoma got to him first, caused the fumble, and... Well, he caused the fumble. It's hard to see in that stack who picked yeah. it up, but nonetheless, great position for the Cardinals as the wheels are starting to come off here for the Panthers. Sure is. 50 seconds to go in the third quarter as you see the time running out. Pitch back. This one to Putney. And spins away and picks up a very tough four yards. I'll tell you, I wonder if the pros, I'm very honest about this, Ron Wolfley of the Cleveland Browns, could run a play, get back, and get back to the line of scrimmage this fast. The I doubt pace. it. <laughs> no, seriously, the pace is yeah, unbelievable. It, it, the pace of the yeah. game in high school really is the so much pace quicker. Is so, yeah, it's, it's, so much, it's so quick, but yet, you know, you also don't have 330-pound offensive linemen out there yeah. also. You know, well, I was that, only uh, being, you know, there's tons exactly. of Exactly, but, but uh, to log that weight around is hard. But, yes, the pace is very quick. We are pick up, so there's a second and seven now. Time running out. They get this in the green, and he gets to the 15, and maybe inside the 15, as time a... runs out. That ends the third quarter with the Cardinals of Minter with a 14-point lead, 20 to 6. Now, let's go to the scoreboard.
need some happy fans. It's a little cold, but that's one way of getting warm, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that. 14 point lead. So much riding on this game. Here's Chad Green. He's got 199 yards, 17 carries. 84 uh, yards is longest, and that was for a touchdown. He's got all three of Mentor's TDs. About 11 uh, yards per carry. That's a little bit over his average. But boy, this is an outstanding player. He's a great basketball player for the Mentor Cardinals. Great spring in his legs. And uh, he's, he's stolen a few balls and slammed and jammed down the court to bring down the house. It's just a great athlete. It's enjoy watching him play. But as a Euclid grad, I'm not enjoying that aspect of it. Oh, great tackle. Open field. On that stop was number 32, Adam Reitman, who's a two-way performer. Only one of three on Euclid's team. The other is Sean Thompson, who's a guard on offense, tackle on defense. And Kevin Bremer, who is a tight end on offense and the safety on defense. And the Cardinals will just use every available second before they uh, snap the ball. Just take their time getting to the line of scrimmage. And there's Mike Yersich. A little bit banged up and very dejected. Can't get anything going offensively. That was a first down play for Menner. That's a first and ten. Just tough yards now to the ten. Brendan Bigham in on the stop. So the line of scrimmage will be now the 11. So that was a three yard pickup. It's going to bring up a second and seven. No. No, it'll be a second and three. They spot the ball at the eight. The game we did a week ago really uh, uh, shook up the points in division three in the computers. We'll talk about that in just a second. The, the Keston Twinsburg game. And this is Green. I tell you, he hits that hole. Keeps he never playing. stopped his leg from moving. He's only 5'10 and 170 pounds. 175. And he's hitting people that are 210, 245, 260. On the interior de uh, defensive line for uh, Euclid. I guess you would say Kentucky's loss is Menor's gain because uh, in eighth grade, Green's family moved up this way and I'm sure uh, Dick Kirschbaum, when he note, noted this eighth or ninth grader in his program, noted we got to get this kid to football when he gets up to the high school. And uh, boy, Chad's done some great things with it. Twelve men on the field for Euclid. Last game of the season, and they're going to be called for twelve men on the field. Kevin Brummer on the stop. That's got to give you a gray hair. We were just talking a minute ago about uh, the Twinsburg and Kenston situation. Twinsburg. There's the officials call Twinsburg by virtue of their victory. They look real solid now for the playoffs. Kenston's basically out of it and Lake Catholic who was out of the top four almost the whole season and this is a defending state champion. Lake Catholic is now third in their division so it looks like they're they're going to go on in. Okay first downs men are 11 to 7. Look at the yards mm. on the ground. They averaged 340 on the ground and they're uh, maybe they will get that tonight but in the time of possession pretty equal. Yeah, but the first quarter, it was nine minutes to two and a half or something like that. The only thing that matters is 20 to six right now, and that's uh, Menor, and they've got 10 minutes to hang on to it. Right up the middle. Chad Green gets his fourth TD of the game and his 13th of the season. Can you say good? <laughs> I know what you're doing, boy. I'll tell you. Well, he's, he had four touchdowns a week ago. Do you know, two weeks ago in their ball game against Brush, Chad Green bruised his foot and was not able to be as effective as they would have liked. So last week, he only carried the ball 10 times in their victory before playing Euclid. He averaged about a usual eight to nine yards a carry. And so they're wondering if he would be full speed this week, and he was and is. The kid's over 200 yards. He has four touchdowns. He has just just been simply amazing for the, the Cardinals tonight. And you are seeing a lot of people uh, on the Euclid side starting to figure out what they're going to do with the rest of their Euc rest of their uh, Friday nights. They're heading to the exits. Well, he's, he's got now 1,098 yards. Came in with 886, and he's got 212 already. So I, I, not to change the subject, but I just find that totally amazing that there's people actually leaving, leaving this game. game right now. You know, the high school that I came from was a pretty big high school. 
But uh, I got to tell you, you know, everyone there was either related to the guys on the field or, <laughs> or your friend or your girlfriend or whatever. We got well, how many people, people would go to your who games? are leaving. Oh, we, we, we would have probably. A couple thousand? I would say on um, the giveaway night where they <laughs> grapple something off, we might get. 600 people. No kidding. Yeah, 600. And that was from a high school that you know we we're gra our graduating class was five 500 people. That's too. a pretty good size. Yeah, pretty good size. Good to be taken by Pearson. Loses it, picks it up at the five, and he's dragged down from behind at the 14. And I'll tell you what, the Cardinals are high. They're getting a high just playing tough football. They're going to enjoy the rest of these, uh, the 10 minutes that's left in this ball game, Mike and Ron, because uh, Euclid just has not been able to get anything going, and down 26 to 27 to 6 just doesn't look like they'll be able to mount anything to, to make this a game. No way. And, John, Euclid came in as the favorite. They came in as the favorite. They were the unbeaten team. They are already in the computer top four. We'll see what happens after this game because... With a men or victory, they may squeak in if other teams win for them. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But great job by Menner tonight. Pearson! And he breaks a little. And Derek Stetter caught him down around the ankles and brought him down. This great effort on defense by Menner has been unbelievable. Menner just did not let Euclid do anything all night. They had that one drive, and that's been about it. And it took them 13 plays when they got the ball on the 41. They haven't been able to break anything, and uh, all you can do is look at those two plays. Green goes 86 yards, and then he goes 50-some yards for score. It's just explosive, and uh, he's been outstanding tonight. It's going to be a second and five for Euclid to give it again to Pepe Pearson. And he gets to about the 20-yard pickup. I talk a little bit about Pepe Pearson. This is his junior year. He's already at right, right around 1,400 yards, an outstanding season for him. Compare him to Robert Smith. Smith, when he was a sophomore, gained 1,300 yards, nine yards a carry. When Robert was a junior, he averaged 8.8 .8 yards a carry, 1,564 yards. Now here's Pepe Pearson. As a sophomore a year ago, he averaged 10 yards a carry. This year, he's at about eight yards per carry. This is an outstanding young football player. Watch him in two years to go to a major school to play football. Say the least. Here's it. And completes this one to Kevin Brimmer. And about the 40 where he's driven out of bounds. And a first down for Euclid. They're not giving up. They still have 8.14 remaining in this game. Derek Stetter drove him out. That stops the clock with 8.14 showing. But a... 21-point deficit for Euclid. Pearson at the tail, Reichman at the fullback. Play action, kept by Yursich, and he is brought down at about the 47 by Chris Wilson, making the first hit. I think Menner would be content to let Euclid get five or six, seven yards a, a pop and just eat some of the clock up. There's 7.53 to go. They're leading 27 to 6. They have uh, All right, come on, most assuredly are on their way towards their ninth victory against just one loss, and that was to Austin Town Fitch, and Fitch held, handled them pretty, uh, pretty well in that game. Yeah, the comparative scores between the common opponents and between both teams it's almost even. And interception! This is Brendan Stetter! And a flag is dropped. But the reception, Brendan Stetter, the senior, 5'10", 165 cornerback, gets the interception. And we'll see a lot of those second string kids for Menner. That was intended for Jernigan. And nice job by Stenner just to be in the right place, come away with the interception. And now I'm sure a lot of clean jerseys will come into the ball game and uh, get a chance to see some action. Hey, I like that. All right. Ron, he kind of got the Ron Wolfley look. You know, it looks just like Ron, doesn't it? He's got the Wolfley look. Oh, yeah. he's, a special, he's got special teams written all over him. Except well, he has more hurt than you do. Here we go, that Brandon Stenner on the like interception. That. And that's going to be a penalty called against Minter on the clipping after the interception. That'll take the ball back to Minter's own clipping on the run back. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. 
So Mender will take over with 7.24 on the clock. That's all the time that remains here in the third quarter. They've got a 21-point lead, 27-6, and they've got a first down. And they're keeping their starters in here. Kirschbaum does not trust the explosiveness of the offense from Euclid. Hand off to Pepe Pearson. I wonder if the motivation, and this is only a son, just to bring up, I think a lot of people are probably th thinking about it. The conference now is over and done with. Everyone left. The Euclid, uh, Mentor would not leave the conference, so everyone else left did. Mentor. Yeah. And they had a difficult time, they being Mentor, trying to find another league to get into. The LEL brought them in. We'll get to that later. But that could be one of the motivations here for these players. Pitch back again. Pep to Green. Green is forced out of bounds. And Ovis went into the uh, bench. But look at that mud. They're trying to do anything they can to demoralize Chad Green. And he's done yeah. the demoralizing against them tonight. He just he gets up hard hit by the sidelines, by the bench. And he keeps on ticking. But you're saying now uh, in the LEL, they'll be in the larger division of the LEL. Yeah, and they, there's a small school division and a big school division that Mentor, Mentor will be in the big school part. Yeah, they, uh, Mentor came in, Garfield came in in, in uh, Warrensville. Garfield and Warrensville are the smaller schools. The big schools are, and I'll give you the big schools in the conference right after uh, this play. It's a third and four. Play action. Jason Beatty is sacked uh, back to about the 47-yard line. Now, the Shaw is the big school, Lakewood is the big school, Valley Forge is the big school, and Cleveland Heights is the big school. That are the four games teams that they will play this year. Coming Mentor. up in 93, yes. 94 season, they will we'll pick up those same big schools, and also they will play Shaker and, I think, Parma. One thing to note, Mike, as we see the punt get away, is Euclid's AD and Mentor's AD would like... Oh, I don't know what he's picking that up for. Euclid's AD and Mentor's AD would like to uh, continue this rivalry. I know there's commitments to the LEL for yes. Mentor. They'd like to restart this thing in a couple of years and still have Mentor and Euclid on the schedule. And it'd be worthwhile. They're both big schools, and they both have good football programs. They should play each other. Here's the punt. If it wasn't muddy, it could have been blocked. Watch this. Oh, that's Pepe chasing, they picked up the ball, and that's what speed will do for you. Kirschbaum tries to get him in and wrestles him down. I think it's a little frustration, too, on Pepe yeah. Pearson's he part. He wants something, uh, wants to move, wants, wants to get to the do, ball yeah, going. Wants to make something happen in the worst way. He is, uh, as we mentioned, he's an explosive player. In track, fifth in the state in the 100 meters. And to give you an idea just how fast he is and then how Jonathan Burrell, how fast yes. he is. This was the 100-meter the champion. The offense, they were not set for one second. From John Marshall High School, who is one of the fastest kids in America. Yes. An absolute burner in uh, the 100 meters. In fact, I saw him run on uh, a 55-meter dash at the KFC meet and blowing away his competition by three or four yards. He's just an incredible runner. Pepe's one of the fast kids in the area, but Jonathan Burrell is just Look amazing. Out. High snap, Jason Beatty gets it and gets the punt away. And it's going to take a roll and will die at about the 26. Newton will take over from that point, first down but they only have 526 to try and get some more points on the board. Didn't the Marshall running back you're talking about, wasn't he classified Jonathan. in USA Today as the top time in the 100 meters? And he's coming back for his senior year. This, yes. this coming uh, spring will be a senior track season. Oh, he's just explosive. Jonathan Burrell, wow, can he fly. And uh, we're seeing two kids on this field tonight that have great speed, but and that's in green and... Uh, Pearson and also Jernigan as well, but boy, Jonathan Burrell is just amazing. Your switch gets some time. Looks for a receiver and overthrows Kevin Bremer. If I can, just make a short mention of a couple of football players in Greater Cleveland that we wish the best of luck to. We talked uh, earlier about Isaac Bonner, who has the trouble with his neck. Also, Toby Bruning from Lakewood High School. 
Did you see the uh, coaching staff talking to some of their players, talking to Bingham? They've had uh, a difficult time getting Toby Bruning of Lakewood High School, one of the fine players in the area, getting him out there to play. He's had trouble with his neck. Uh, he's taken some hits, and there's a possibility he will not be able to play football anymore. So we wish him the best of luck. And also, Billy Elkins, he is stricken with cancer about six, seven months ago. He's at wide receiver for North Ridgeville, and we wish him the best of luck. Everybody in Northeast Ohio is polling for Billy Elkins that he can get... Uh, Get out, of, uh, uh, get out of the very difficult bind that he is in right now. They've had fundraisers for him, and uh, we wish nothing but the best for uh, Willie Elkins, Bill Elkins of North Richville High. I'd like to thank, for the entire season, all the coaches and the athletic directors who are so helpful if we're playing at their field, the cooperation we get, the administrations, some of them bringing in transformers so that we could do their team or putting in the proper power. The coaches are getting all the materials to John and I. And yeah, we in the evening, it. John calling them and getting more information. And also the ground crews keeping these facilities in outstanding condition. Well, some people said uh, a sloppy field or a, a spongy field would negate the speed of Euclid, but it didn't negate the speed of Chad Green, no. that's for sure. Plenty of time. And slipping down, the intended receiver was number 83, Sparky Burkett. Well, Tom Bank, oh, take a look at some of the, the muck that we're talking about. This is along the sideline on the Euclid side, but Tom Bank walked this entire field all over an inch by inch, basically, before the game, just to see what type of a surface his kids would be up against. But obviously, both schools have had to contend with it. Menor has played much better on it, and Menor uh, deserves this victory. It's been a very resounding victory, 27-6 to so far, the cards on top. Well, Tom Banks made a, alluded to that in the open that the field and the weather could have an impact.